women tortured, brainwashed and prostituted by the Illuminati, paint a disturbing picture of how the world is really run. Both say, they were prostituted to world leaders as children. They, are Bryce Taylor, author of Thanks for the Memories, 1999, and Kathy O'Brien, with Mark Phillips, author of Transformation of America, 1995. These books are consistent and confirm the revelations of Illuminati programmer, Svali. If you want to understand the world, you must read these three women. Essentially every country is run by a shadow government, which owes its loyalty to the New World Order, controlled by a 13-member Illuminati Council. According to Svali, each ruler represents an area of Europe held under its sway, and each one represents an ancient dynastic bloodline. American leaders are often direct descendants, whether legitimate or illegitimate. According to Taylor, Henry Kissinger is the CEO for the Illuminati who naturally prefer to remain in the shadows. Our political leaders are chosen for their moral frailties, blackmail ability and willingness to advance the Illuminati plan. Strings are pulled and they mysteriously rise to prominence. It doesn't matter which party they belong to. They secretly serve the cause. Many are products of a life that may include pedophilia, drug trafficking and consumption, child pornography, bestiality, mind control, rape, torture, satanic rituals and human sacrifices. They are given many opportunities to indulge their vices, which ensures continued obedience and solidarity. Drug trafficking, white slavery, prostitution and pornography finance secret New World Order programs. Elements of the CIA, FBI, Coast Guard, military and police are all involved, as is the Mafia. This information may upset or enrage some people. I could not bring myself to read these books for over two years. The torture and depravity they describe is excruciating. My mental filters would not accept it. Writing about it is difficult. The public has a childlike trust in its leaders, especially presidents. The charge that they really belong to a sadistic criminal traitorous syndicate is a betrayal beyond belief. We respond with denial and anger. We don't want to admit that we are dupes and our perception of reality is false. Dumbed down, we are incapable of common sense and concerted action. We refuse to contemplate what they may have in store. Better to ridicule the messenger and change the channel. These women could have remained silent and found some deserved peace and happiness. Instead they are taking great risks to warn humanity of our danger. Are we going to listen? Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. Both Kathy O'Brien and Bryce Taylor were victims of the CIA's MK Ultra Mind Control program, which is designed to create human robots to serve functions ranging from prostitutes to couriers to killers. Their families belong to secret satanic sects that sexually abuse their children generation after generation to produce the trauma which causes multiple personality disorder. In this traumatized condition, the mind splinters into many compartments. Victims exhibit extraordinary powers of recollection and endurance, and can be easily programmed to do anything. These cults operate within many organizations including charities, churches, boys' girls' clubs, Masonic lodges, daycares and private schools. Society is being subjected to the same type of trauma-based programming using constant war and atrocities that include Auschwitz, Hiroshima, the Kennedy assassinations, September 11, Abu Ghraib and financial turmoil. We are being collectively desensitized on the one hand, and programmed to focus on sex, violence, trivia and empty social rituals on the other. Both women were sexually abused as babies. Kathy O'Brien was often given her father's penis instead of a baby bottle. Congressman Gerald Ford, who was involved in drug trafficking and child pornography with the Michigan mob, initiated her into the MK Ultra program. No wonder Betty Ford drank. O'Brien's father prostituted her as a child to friends, business associates and politicians, as a favor or for money. She also appeared in numerous child pornography and bestiality films. O'Brien, born in 1957, says she serviced an array of politicians, including the cocaine-snorting Clintons, Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, Dick Cheney, Pierre Trudeau, Brian Mulroney, Governors Lamar Alexander and Richard Thornburg, Bill Bennett, author of The Book of Virtues, Senators Patrick Leahy, Robert Byrd, her handler, and Arlen Specter. Notable by their absence were Jimmy Carter and Richard Nixon. Taylor, born in 1951, slept with JFK and LBJ as a preteen and teenager. When O'Brien's daughter, Kelly, was born in 1980, they often worked as a mother-daughter team. George H. W. Bush particularly liked Kelly. Cheney is not a pederast because his large genitals horrify children. Referring to George Bush, Dick Cheney told her. A vice president is just that, an undercover agent, taking control of the drug industry for the president. 
George Bush Jr. was present on one occasion but is not accused. O'Brien was rescued by Mark Phillips in 1988. It is likely that Bush Jr. is involved in this mind control, drug and sex scene. Rumors swirl around him and his behavior is erratic. Remember the pretzel incident. In 2003, Margie Schrodinger, a black Texas woman who was suing the president for rape, committed suicide. Senator Robert Byrd, who controls the nation's purse strings, justified to Kathy his involvement in drug distribution, pornography and white slavery as a means of gaining control of all illegal activity worldwide to fund black budget covert activity that would bring about world peace through world dominance and total control. He said, 95% of the people want to be led by the 5%. Proof is that the 95% do not want to know what really goes on in government. Bird believed that mankind must take a giant step in evolution through creating a superior race. Bird believed in the annihilation of underprivileged nations and cultures through genocide and genetic engineering to breed the more gifted, the blondes of the world. O'Brien visited a series of secret paramilitary compounds throughout the US, like one at Mount Shasta in California. I learned that this not-so-secret military buildup consisted of special forces trained robotic soldiers, black unmarked helicopters, and top-secret weaponry, including electromagnetic mind control equipment. At these compounds, O'Brien and her daughter were often hunted like wild animals, tortured and raped for the amusement of CIA, military and politicians. O'Brien worked as a sex slave at Bohemian Grove, the elite's perversion playground on the Russian River in California. She says the place is wired for video in order to capture world leaders in compromising acts. Slaves of advancing age or with failing programming were ritualistically murdered at random in the wooded grounds of Bohemian Grove. There was a room of shackles and tortures, an opium den, ritualistic sex altars, group orgy rooms, I was used as a rag doll in the toy store and as a urinal in the Golden Arches room. Strangely, mind-controlled sex slaves are used as diplomats and lobbyists as well. At a governor's conference, Secretary of Education, Bill Bennett, advised O'Brien to persuade these governors at their weakest moment, bring them to their knees while you are on yours, and convince them that global education is the way to the future, if there is to be any future at all. Why did the Illuminati let these women live? I don't know. I don't know how many they have killed. Perhaps they want the truth to be known gradually. Perhaps they have a shred of decency left. Perhaps they are confident of their power and think these women won't be believed. As the Kennedy assassination and 9-11s prove, the United States and most countries have been totally subverted by a Luciferian international criminal elite. The role of politicians, media and education is to keep the sheep deluded and distracted while the elite stealthily advances its goal of world tyranny. Western society today is a massive fraud. It is tragic that brave young American soldiers have been brainwashed to believe they are advancing freedom when the opposite is the case. A friend tells me that this video is treason. Is it patriotic to obey traitors? The populations of the West are spoiled, self-centered and complacent. How can things be so bad when we have so much? We don't realize that the goodies can be taken away in a second by tightening credit. We don't realize that we are being distracted while our political and social institutions, our bulwarks against tyranny, are being infiltrated and dismantled. Our children are being brainwashed. Don't ask, what can we do? That is conditioned helplessness. Figure it out yourself. Take responsibility. There is no quick fix to this mess. But we must stand up for truth. They may have the weapons of mass deception, but, as Kathy O'Brien says, the truth doesn't go away. I'm sorry that the video illustration is far from good, but I'm trying my best to make this video useful for everyone. I've put up all of my time and energy for this channel every day. I hope you enjoy it. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.